Hello, everyone. I'm Tamika Key. I am new to the Beat Retreat, but not to this industry. I'm an iTech nerd, um, certified, <laughs> and, um, and we're going to talk about some cool stuff, yeah? We are, and I am Mike from T-Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> Mo from MIQ. So, Mo, um, if I'm being honest, MIQ sounds like another ad tech acronym in the mix. Um, can you tell us what MIQ does and sort of where you fit in the CTV ecosystem? Yeah, I'll just, I mean, that, it was sort of funny starting out. I'll just share sort of an anecdote from last night, which is um, someone, won't name names, but came up to me and looked at my name tag and said, Mo, from Mickey? <laughs> Um, and I did what any of you did, would, which is I tried to find Jamie from Disney in the crowd and just said, go talk to, <laughs> go talk to her instead. Um, you know, we're uh, in a subset of the programmatic industry, which is uh, managed services. And what that means is we believe really quite passionately that the best way to transact media to get the most value for marketers is through programmatic. And what that means is, you know, we, in terms of what we do, we try to understand brand uh, and agency goals for their marketing campaigns, um, you know, what their business objectives are. And then, you know, we partner with um, the sort of the best uh, supply sources, data sources, platforms to help achieve those marketing outcomes for them. Um, you know, in terms of that category of businesses, that might be sort of new, it's, you know, quite a large category where, um, you know, we think we're kind of the best in, in that space. And as a testament, we're probably the largest independent services provider for programmatic, um, you know, in, in the industry. So isn't the, I want to interrupt you because isn't the whole point of, I would assume that the point of programmatic is to reduce the need for managed services, right? <laughs> so, I mean, that, right, automation, that, that's the point. So why do you need to exist? Well, here's the thing, right? So for those of you in the room who, um, you know, there, there's a misconception that programmatic is pushing a button and letting the algorithm sort of run a campaign. And, um, and that's just not reality. The reality is it's a complex ecosystem and a complex set of problems that you need to activate on. And the human in the loop is actually probably the most valuable component of a programmatic activation that there is. I'll give you a perfect example for CTV, right? Which is, you might be wondering, your programmatic service, what are you doing at Beat? Um, we launched a RTV programmatic business four years ago. Um, it scaled from kind of scratch to about a third of our business today. And what's resonated with the marketers and agencies that we work with is the CTV programmatic space is really complex. And it's only gotten more complex in the last couple of years, which is, you know, if you're a large advertiser and you want to reach your audience across all the great streaming services that are in the room today, as well as all the online video spaces and all the audio spaces, et cetera, um, it used to be you could do that through one DSP, one buying platform, and get most of that scale. Today, you know, if you even just think about what's happened this quarter with Netflix and Xander, um, you know, what publishers, I think, have rightly decided is they need to be closer to their demand partners and strategically close to maybe one, uh, maybe two demand partners specifically. And so for an advertiser, that means I've got to run anywhere between three DSPs on the low end to get scale across streaming and online video all the way up to five to six DSPs. And that is where, you know, programmatic isn't just automated, right? That's, I need to go out and train people to do that across six platforms. And you need to have six seats, and that's expensive and ridiculous. So, um, but you, what you just described sounds like fragmentation, and I think fragmentation makes it difficult to scale. So what, what are some of the specific problems that advertisers are facing in, in terms of doing that? Can you get in the weeds? Yeah, super, super weedy. By the way, I, I've got a product background, so I, I get in the weeds on, on a lot of these things. Um, here, you know, when we talk about complexity, I'll just use an example of a large, let's say, an insurance brand, right? You've got a strategic audience that I want to hit, and the target is, you know, I want to get them to drive auto quotes. If I want to do that across streaming, well, I've got to reach my audience where they're watching streaming services, right? So they're probably on Netflix, great content there, and I've got to activate there. They're on Disney, but they're also on YouTube, right? They're on Roku. They're on a number of these, these places. And in order to reach my audiences on those places, I've got to be where that, uh, that partner prefers me to be. Um, and so I need to um, you know, make sure I'm, I'm across all those services. That causes three problems that we talked about. One is a planning problem, which is if I've got a pot of money to spend, how do I decide what 
part of that goes to publisher A versus publisher B because the audience data sharing for planning doesn't exist. And so you need third party sort of um, sources to be able to plan across capabilities. So planning problems are a big problem. The second is activation challenges, which is, you know, talking about people, I've got to go train a team of traders to trade on six DSPs. Um, and for those of you in the room who have done that, that is an operational nightmare. And so that makes it really hard to transact in programmatic for CTV. And then measurement challenges we've talked day in, day out in this retreat for, so I won't get into the weeds too much, but our POV is measurement's gotten better. It still has major gaps, especially when it comes to wall garden measurement. Um, and so those are some of the weedy sort of things that we talk about. It, you talk about planning, targeting, and measurement, but those seem like sort of fundamental table stakes that at least were solved on the linear end, right? Why, why is it so difficult on the CTV end? I think there's a few people in the room who wouldn't say they're solved on the, the linear end either. Um, I think, listen, you know, Travis talked in his uh, panel yesterday about um, in business incentives. Um, and I am also a filthy capitalist. And so I'm, I'm here for the business incentives that, um, you know, sometimes work for and sometimes against, um, you know, standardization in the industry. I think the big thing for me that I tend to hear over and over again is we're speaking different languages. Digital people in the room using kind of really complex language around automated trading, algorithms, performance. Um, and when they go into a room of TV folks that are audience and content and storytelling oriented, um, that message just doesn't land. And so we do a lot of education with our teams on making sure that message is delivered in a way that's understandable. And on the flip side, you know, if you're a traditional person trying to navigate um, the digital landscape, that's complex, and I'm sure we all appreciate that. So a lot of it, I think, does come down to speaking the same language. And I think that different languages comment is is very is very poignant and interesting. My the previous event that I worked in was Ad Monsters, which is very focused on sort of publishers and people who are in the weeds sort of managing ad tags, and we would always try to get TV people to come to Ad Monsters. And now in hindsight, I'm like, yeah, no, it's completely different, completely different um, language. It's a good party, completely though. Different, yeah, it's a good party. <laughs> but completely different sort of needs and values. What I've also heard, though, is as we have this influx of kind of like DTC growth-focused marketers coming into the mix, that they don't get the kind of metrics that they're used to um, from when they try to go onto TV, that it's like, hey, you know, if, if I'm the type of person that wants to run a Facebook ad campaign or something and I can tweak it literally an hour later to see what happens and then you have to wait 24 hours for TV reporting, that seems like a challenge as well. What, what are you seeing in terms of that? Yeah, there's a lot of education we do. So first of all, our, our business um, has some DTC components in it, but um, it, is, it is just a portion of the business that we do. We have a ton of marketers that um, we work with, both large kind of national marketers and, and some localized ones as well, and certainly some DTC. I think for marketers that are coming from programmatic and going into streaming, what we try to educate on is TV is the best way to tell brand stories. And that is the thing that we're trying to do when we're operating in TV. Just because you're doing it through the same platform you buy display in doesn't mean that you know, that objective changes. And so what we try to educate you know, programmatic first teams on is you know, performance still matters when you're telling a brand story, but that performance looks a little different. So we're looking at metrics like you know, what does attention look like when it comes to a video campaign. And that's actually a really interesting metric to optimize towards. Right? You can actually do a pretty complex campaign on that. Um, so How? I think the metrics change How? a little bit. How do you do that? So we're using a couple of different um, attention measurement providers. There's going to be something in the news in a couple of weeks also <laughs> about um, sort of a partnership there, so I won't break the news. But, um, but, but there are companies that are looking at attention for video. A lot of them are panel-based. Um, and you know we've talked about them in the past meet retreats. But um, what that means is I can look at an impression and say, not just was it served and was it completed, which on CTV is 100%. Um, but also, you know, how much impact did that drive for uh, a brand? So you started out kind of saying that your programmatic platform, um, and I do feel a little bit, we have another panel later about programmatic, I do feel like it's a little bit of a dirty word here. Um, <laughs> um, but is there a way that programmatic can kind of help bridge that gap between the, the very performance-focused marketers and the brand 
the brand um, capabilities of TV. Yeah, I think, I, I don't know where Joanna is, but she, I think, said it really well yesterday, which is, um, you know, programmatic is just, it's, it's just automation, right? Programmatic isn't open RTB. Um, there's tons of different ways to transact. We do all of our CTV buying and direct deals with our publisher partners. And so, um, you know, you can have a direct deal and still run it programmatically and still do the, the cool kind of customization that an advertiser wants. Um, and so for us, it's do we want more automation in TV? I think generally the trend from our marketers is they do. Um, and the industry follows the buy side to an extent. And so to the extent that marketers demand automation to help drive efficiencies for them, I think that is going to be the trend that we, that we continue to see. Now, how that gets transacted, that could be you know, like a, a guaranteed deal with a fixed CPM that looks a lot like direct uh, buying. And we're doing more and more of that today. We're really proud to have done, partnered um, with Xander on, on, on some of the Netflix stuff. Um, but you know, it'll look different over time. But the reality is automation is here to stay, and marketers demand it. Automation versus programmatic. So um, you also mentioned when we chatted before this that, that MIQ was going to start focusing on media owners moving forward. So is there anything either from within or maybe you know another partner in the industry that you are excited or hopeful about from that perspective? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for us is, um, you know, where programmatic services is, again, it's like a, a niche within programmatic, which is complex anyway. And so what we're trying to do a little bit more of is just tell the story of where we are as a, um, as a business. And, and our marketers are asking us to get closer to our um, supply partners, right? And so in so much as, you know, we're having great conversations with um, folks in, in this space about how do we do that? and you know, how, why a programmatic player like us is starting to do kind of, you know, long-term agreements with suppliers. Um, that's not something that the industry has seen before, right? So we're, we're doing, we're having to do a lot of education and conversations like this. Um, and we're excited for that. So I think the, the biggest thing I would just say is, um, you know, Aaron, myself, Oscar are going to be in the room just kind of giving that message. And we'd love to, you know, just, just have more of that dialogue. I think it's such an interesting word that we use to describe, like we suppliers, right? And it's like this is this is some of the most gorgeous premium content that you know that people that we can experience, and it's just reduced to basic supply and demand. Um, and I think we have to because that's that's sort of what what happens with automation. But I guess maybe drilling down a little bit further, why should a media owner? work with someone like you? Like, wh why can't they do it themselves? Or should, you know, should they try to do it themselves? Yeah, so first of all, I think um, this is a misconception. They're, they're, the automation does not mean you're commoditized. Um, there is massive differences in how marketers value really high quality premium content. And we see that, you know, when they work with us. Um, and so, you know, just because something is transacted automatically does not mean, you know, you know, content X that's generated by um, a user or, or um, you know, um, versus content Y is, is going to be sort of um, equally valued. So I think that's a, a misconception. We're trying to kind of challenge that directly. The, the big reason, you know, partners, I think, work with us is we represent a ton of demand. Usually that large national sales teams don't, um, you know, really get access to directly. Um, and so we've got a ton of sort of demand for close, um, you know, really high quality uh, uh, content partnerships. Um, and we're excited to have that conversation. In a lot of cases, we've noticed that's incremental to what a direct sales team is doing. Thank you, Mel. Thanks, Mika.